Now you can say, oh, well, I'm a Paul's son. Paul's for me. Yeah, okay, that's the easy way. Paul's for you. And you can be on this side. But you see what the argument is here. And this is not just innocent proof. He's attacking the basic uh, um, uh, decisions that were made in Jerusalem in the 50s. And the principal one that he's supposed to abide by, he's just fulminating against here and laughing at it. Now, well, you can read it yourself. But unless you understand uh, what the content and he's using this passage puffed up that we have here that introduces Habakkuk 2 4. Let me see if I can find my way before I end this little excursus here just to. Okay. Behold, his soul is puffed up and not upright within him. The beginning of Habakkuk 2 4. Interpreted this means the wicked shall double the guilt upon themselves and shall not be forgiven when they are judged. Who's judging them? Oh, the last judgment we're talking about. We're talking about at the end of this book, the day of judgment, the judgment day. Finally, the righteous shall live by his faith. How about two, four, be what we were getting to? Okay. I don't know, it's all ripped up here. Interpreted this concerns all those who are doers of the Torah in the house of Judah whom God will deliver from the house of judgment because of their works and because of their faith in the teacher of righteousness. Who God will deliver from, and later on we hear that the house of judgment is the thing that God delivers among many nations in the, uh, uh, with fire and brimstone and so on and so forth. So what, what, what do we have here? Basically we have a Jamesian interpretation of Habakkuk 2.4. If you know how uh, the letter of James, how many are familiar with that? In James 2, James attacks the foolish man who thinks you're saved by faith alone. And he says, it may not be a good argument, James says in, Habba, in, in James 2, Don't you know, O oh foolish man? I think the actual translation is empty man. Don't you, doesn't name him. Don't you know, empty man, that our Abraham, they both argue about Abraham, uh, was counted a friend of God and he was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac on the altar and that's a work, not just faith. I don't think it's a very good argument, but anyway, that was the argument that was being used. And that's how we're saved. Faith and works working together. That's the James, and that's what you have here. You're saved by works and faith in the righteous teacher. But even more so, you have another, another qualification. This passage concerns the doers of the Torah in the house of Judah. Now, house of Judah is a fancy way of saying what? It's in the old archaic. Jews. Jews are the house of Judah. And I don't want to be cruel here, but this document is very aware of things, how this passage is being used, I think. It's in this polemical situation. If it concerns these, then it does not concern non-doers of the law or the Torah in the house of Judah, but it also does not con does not concern non-doers of the law outside the house of um, Judah. In other words, the passage only applies to doers of the law in the house of Judah because they are the ones who are heirs to the covenant. That's why Paul is so big on the heirs. Now, I'm not saying one group is right or wrong. I'm just showing you the ideological background. These documents are really, and to know we're on the day of judgment here, and that things have fallen apart, that's why the last days are going to be prolonged. This thing ends up in its last passages. Uh, of what use is an idol that its maker should shape it? This is from Habakkuk 2.18. For the craftsman puts his trust in his own creation. Interpreted, this concerns all the idols of the nations, which they make to serve and worship them. But these shall not save them on the day of judgment. Woe to the wood, awake, dumb, rise, keep such a, how can such a thing gu uh, guide? This is Habakkuk 2, 19 to 20. Behold, it's covered with gold and silver, but there's no spirit within it, but the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be signed up before him. That's the passage. Interpret it. This concerns all the nations who s but serve stone and wood. But on the day of judgment, on the judgment day, God will destroy from all the, from off the earth, all idolaters and evil men. That's how it ends. That's the end of this of this of this uh, of Pesher or 
thing on, on Habakkuk. Well, the evil men are, in my view, the backsliders among the Jews who do not do the Torah, if you want to call it that. I'm talking about their, their, their view now, not mine. And because I think a lot of wicked men do the Torah, and maybe they don't mean to be wicked, but they're not saying to anything necessarily. Anyway, and the others are the idolaters, are all the people who, 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 who are idol worship all over the universe, which the Muslims have picked up in their thing. So this group, those things are are going to, are, are falling apart, that the last time is going to be way extended, but the Lord is in his holy temple, is the passage how it ends in, in Habakkuk, let all the earth be silent before him, so it retreats to faith in God. God is in his holy temple, let all the earth be still. This relates to the day of judgment, that on which God will destroy from all the earth, all these wicked people and idolaters. So it's consoling itself, knowing that that is what the final thing is going to be. It's a very incredible uh, insight in our world. Um, okay, your question. You know, whether uh, he was whoever the righteous or the in, in Hebo, Hebo, who is, who is meant, are they referring to a Messiah still? In oh, well, you'll have to read the text more carefully than this to make that. It's a very complicated judgment. And that's not something I can uh, tell you in five minutes. I'd have to take a whole course to decide what they're referring to there. So I just have to pass on that. Read some of uh, my books, other people's books on this subject, and you'll have to draw your own conclusion. Uh, the, the problem is, um, has the Messiah come? Hasn't he come? Is he returning? So on. All I can say, it's a messianic group that's involved in messianic ideology. I don't know if for them it's come or, or not come or it's going to return. It isn't clear because it uses the word stand up, which is to be resurrected all, all of the time. You can read my thousand page books if you've uh, got any patience and uh, you, you can take it. Uh, uh, maybe you'll discover some answers to those, but I can, can't give you Okay, um, may I have to read one last thing? Oh, okay, go ahead. What's that new fornication? Well, it wasn't undo. I added undo. It's <laughs> I don't want to be cruel. I, you know, should I use modern language? Yeah, go ahead. Well, it starts with SC and ends in ING, okay? So uh, I don't have to put in the middle letters uh, outside of marriage, I think. The things Muslims stone people for still today in strict Islamic <laughs> environments. Anyway, I brought one other book that I want to just read you quick. We were talking about the book of Acts. Now, this is called The Recognitions of Clement. Since I had it before.